Welcome to today's class presented to you by Titec Consulting. My name is Emmanuel Cyprian. Today we shall be looking at understanding NIST special publication. Understanding NIST special publications. A quick overview. We're not going to go into details of these NIST special publications. It's just going to be a quick overview. And we're not looking at the entire NIST publications, NIST special publications. We'll be looking at just few of them, probably 11 of them. So what do, you want to have these NIST publications at your fingertips. If you're going for interviews, if you're on the job, or you want to take the certification exams, you need to have at least memorized these NIST special publications. So having it here handy is going to help you a great deal if you fall into any of these categories of either you are going for a job interview or you want to take the, the CAP certification or you are on the job, you're trying to scramble through, okay, you have a project, which of the needs should I reference? This you know, video will help you, you know, to do that. So let us look at some of the NIST special publications that we'll be looking at in this video. So these are the NIST special publications you need to know as an information security professional. One, the NIST special publication 818, revision one. NIST special publication 830, revision one. 837, revision one. 853, revision four. 853A, Revision 4, 860, Volume 1 and 2, 800-115, 800-122, 800-137, and FIPS 200. So let us take each of these missed special publication and just glance through and see what they mean, what is their name, and what they, uh, the purpose of the next publication. Now, the first one I want to look at is the special publication 800-18, revision one. What is the name of this publication? It is called Guide for Developing Security Plans for Federal Information System. Now, what is the purpose of this NIST publication? Is to guide you on how to develop system security plan, SSP. In this NIST publication, you will see a template of SSP inside. In this NIST publication, you'll be able to see what are the content that should be in a, uh, in a system security plan. Obviously, there are minimum of 16 sections that should be in a system security plan. So this NIST publication is the publication you should reference is either you are updating the SSP or you're developing the SSP from the scratch. This is the NIST publication you should reference. The next NIST publication I want to look at is NIST SP 830 Revision 1, and that is Guide for Conducting Risk Assessment. Guide for Conducting Risk Assessment. What is the purpose of this NIST publication? It's a guide to help you understand how to conduct risk assessment. There are nine steps no stipulated in this NIST publication on what you should know when conducting risk assessment, such as the characterization, such as the control um, identification, such as the threat identification, such as the uh, 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 likelihood determination, such as the vulnerability identification, impact determination, risk assessment, recommendation, documentation. You'll find those steps, the nine steps of the risk assessment in this NIST special publication. So if you want to learn more on how to conduct either quantitative or qualitative risk assessment, reference this particular NIST publication. It's a great deal. Another NIST publication that we want to you know, look at is the NIST special publication 837 revision one. This is the guide for applying the risk management framework to federal information system. So 
the risk management framework that we've been talking about, the RMF steps that we've been talking about, they, could, they are found in these NIST special publications. The RMF steps, the risk management framework steps of, that is the categorization, the selection, the implementation, assessment, authorization, and monitor. These are found in this NIST, uh, this NIST special publication. So if you want a guide on how to implement and apply the RMF steps, reference this NIST special publication. That is NIST 837 Revision 1, Guide for Applying the Risk Management Framework to Federal Information System. Now, another NIST special publication that we want to quickly look at again is the NIST Special Publication 853, Revision 4. And what is the name of this publication? Security and Privacy Controls for Federal Information Systems and Organization. This NIST publication, to me, is the loudest of the NIST Special Publication. Why do I say that? This is the NIST publication that contains the security controls. So I call it Security Control Catalog. So all the security control families, we're talking about the 18 control families and the classes, that is the technical, the management, the operational, and the meaning of each of these controls, the description of each of these controls could be found in this NIST publication, that is 853 revision four. If you don't understand a particular NIST, uh, a particular control, reference this NIST publication. That is where you get the explanation you get the concept, you get the writings, you get the enhancement, you get the supplemental guidance section in this uh, NIST publication. The next NIST publication I want to look at is NIST SP853A, Revision 4. And what is it called? Assessing Security and Privacy Controls in the Federal Information System and Organization. This is the NIST publication that guides you on how to assess each of those security controls. This NIST publication guides you. It gives you, you know, lets you know what you should be looking for when assessing a particular security control. This NIST publication also guides you on the method of method of assessment, that is the examining, the interview, and the test method for each of the security control. And this NIST publication also guides you under each of the method, what you should be looking for. So this is a great NIST publication that you should know when assessing security control. Another NIST publication that we'll look at now is NIST SP860, Volume 1 and Volume 2. What is the name of this NIST publication? Guide for Mapping Types of Information and Information System to Security Categories. This is the NIST publication that guides you on how to categorize, identifying the information types that you need to know under each system when doing your categorization. So this is a great deal of special publication that will guide you during categorization. It helps you to also understand these steps of categorization. That is, how do you identify the information type? How do you assign impact, impact level value? And how do you get to your high water mark? This NIST publication, NIST 860, Volume 1 and 2, will guide you on how to do that. Another NIST publication we're looking at is NIST SP800-115. And the name of this publication is Technical Guide to Information Security Testing and Assessment. Remember, we have three types of testing, three methods of testing, security control. We have the examine method, the interview, and the testing. This NIST publication guides you on how to perform those testing. That is, how do you perform your penetration testing, vulnerability scanning, automated testing of security controls? This is a very relevant NIST publication that will guide you on how to do that. Another NIST publication we want to look at is NIST SP800-122 which is Guide to Protecting the Confidentiality of Personally Identifiable Information, PII. The thing is, this NIST publication guides you 
gives you that guidance, gives you the overview, gives you the procedural, you know, way on how to secure and guide personally identifiable information that is PII. If you are the type that works with PII data, such as uh, names, social security number, email address, phone number, uh, medical information, these are PII information. This NIST publication is a good reference. It's reference, it guides you on how you can protect you know, the confidentiality, which is that is the unauthorized access. How do you prevent unauthorized access into PII information? And another NIST publication that we shall be looking at is the NIST SP 800-137. What is the name of this publication? Information Security Continuous Monitoring for Federal Information System and Organization. Now, remember, continuous monitoring is one of the very important steps of the risk management framework. But how do you put together a good continuous monitoring strategy? This particular NIST publication will guide you on how to put up a good continuous monitoring strategy for your security controls and information system. Another risk publication we'll look at is FIPS 199. When you say FIPS, it means Federal Information Processing Standard, FIPS 199. And what is the name of this FIPS documentation? Standard for Security Categorization of Federal Information and Information System. This particular publication is where you find the standard definitions of confidentiality, integrity, and availability. This particular publication is where you go to find the standard definitions of potential impact, that is the low potential impact, moderate potential impact, high potential impact. This is the next publication that you're gonna find the standard definitions. And these definitions is what guides you during categorization. So this next publication, this fifth publication is what is, uh, is the publication that guides you during categorization. Now, another FIPS publication is FIPS 200, and the name is Minimum Security Requirement for Federal Information and Information System. This is the NIST publication that also guides you during the selection of security control. When you are selecting security control according to the categorized impact value, FIPS 200 is you no know, helps or guides you. No, it's a standard that you look up to in knowing the minimum security requirement for that particular information system that has been categorized. So these are the few NIST special publications that you must know at your fingertips as an information security professional. Either you want to go take the certification exam or you're going for interviews or you're even on the job and one of your role is part of the risk management framework steps. You need this NIST publication to reference. You need this NIST publication to be able to do your job. You are never going to reinvent any wheel. Everything you need to know on your job is embedded in these NIST publications. There are more of those NIST publications, but these are the few you should know at your fingertips. I hope this video helps you. Thank you for watching.